Hi, I'm Miriam Gieske. And I'm Adria Fernandez. We're graduate students in the Department of Agronomy and Plant Genetics at the University of Minnesota. We work with Drs. Don Wise, Craig Schaefer, and Bev Durgan developing cover crops for Minnesota systems. Drs. Nancy Elke, Paul Porter, John Baker, and Deborah Allen are also involved in this research as part of the Forever Green Initiative. Cover crops are an important tool for protecting our soil, conserving valuable resources, and enhancing biodiversity to ensure the future productivity of Minnesota agriculture. We'd like to share with you a little bit about what we're doing and why. A big challenge in Minnesota agriculture is our short growing season. Corn and soybeans can't be planted until April or May and are harvested around October. For the majority of the year, the soil lacks living cover and sunlight and rainwater are going unused. Without living plant roots to take them up, valuable nutrients leach away with every rainfall and become pollutants in our groundwater, lakes, and streams. Cover crops grow when the main crop is not active. They keep the soil protected and take advantage of resources that the main crop doesn't use. They can scavenge nutrients and hold them until the following season. Cover crops can also improve the structure of the soil and, in the case of legumes, act as biological fertilizers partnering with soil microbes to fix atmospheric nitrogen into a form usable by plants. So there are a lot of benefits to using cover crops, but there are also some difficulties that can make them risky to growers. First of all, most cover crops just weren't bred to survive our Minnesota winters. So researchers at the U are breeding cover crops with improved hardiness. We're also developing techniques for managing cover crops to make them more compatible with the needs of the major crops we grow. We want to make cover crops an option that can be profitable to farmers and one that they feel confident using. Traditional cover crops include radishes, mustard, hairy vetch, and winter rye. Radishes and mustard are excellent nitrogen scavengers, while rye is renowned for its winter hardiness. Hairy vetch is particularly attractive because it's great at producing nitrogen for the following crop, but we need to invest in breeding varieties that can be planted later in the fall. That would allow hairy vetch to better fit into the corn and soybean rotation. Other crops under development produce both winter cover and high-value grain. One is winter peas. We've been testing varieties developed in Washington State, but they don't consistently survive a Minnesota winter. So we need to invest in breeding hardier winter pea varieties. Another is winter barley, which also struggles to survive our winters. Students and faculty in our barley program have discovered lines that are hardier than current commercial varieties. They're using them to breed high-quality winter barley for Minnesota's malting and brewing industries. Another way to keep living cover on the ground is by planting crops directly into perennial living mulches. For example, Cura clover, an extremely resilient perennial legume, which produces nitrogen and keeps the soil from eroding. However, Cura clover seed is very expensive. We need to breed varieties with greater seed production to make Cura clover economically feasible for farmers. Thanks for letting us share our research with you. We're really excited to be a part of the Forever Green Initiative, working to build a sustainable farm economy to benefit all Minnesotans.